From our study of circuit analysis in the Laplace domain, we know that the impedance of an inductor is L times S, where S is the Laplace variable, and the impedance of a capacitor is 1 over Cs. In that domain, we learned how to calculate the transfer function, which was, we call it H of S, and we defined it as the ratio of the Laplace transform of the output function divided by the Laplace transform of the input function. We also saw that we could explicitly describe the circuit's frequency dependence, the circuit's frequency dependence in the sinusoidal steady state by replacing S with J omega. We're going to follow that same process now to analyze a family of circuits that are referred to as frequency selective circuits or more commonly known as filters. So to do that, we're going to start by calculating or deriving the transfer function for this simple circuit. That's very easy to do on a simple circuit like this just using a voltage divider. In fact, we can say that the output voltage V out of S is equal to the input voltage V of S times R over R plus L times S. So we divide both sides of this by V out over V in. And let's just bring it on over here. We have then V out of S over V in of S. That's our transfer function. H of S is equal to that. Then is equal to R over R plus L S. Now in our study of transfer functions, we saw that a very convenient form was to have the highest power of S in the denominator with a coefficient of 1, and then let everything else fall as it may. So let's multiply here, in order to get the denominator with a coefficient of 1 here, let's multiply the numerator and the denominator by 1 over L. And when we get that, we're going to then rearrange the denominator so that it goes into descending powers of, of S. We then have in the numerator R over L divided by S plus R over L. So that is the transfer function. Now we can determine the frequency response or a function describing the operation of this circuit as a function of frequency, again, by replacing S with J omega. And that will give us the sinusoidal steady state frequency response of this circuit. So we're going to refer to it as the frequency response. We're going to call it H of J omega is simply equal to h of s evaluated at s equals j omega, which in this case gives us r over l divided by replacing s with j omega plus r over l. Now we look at this function and we realize that it is a complex function. In other words, it has real terms and also imaginary terms. And any time we have a function of a complex quantity, we know that we can write it in terms of its real and imaginary parts, or frequently more productive is to write it in terms of its magnitude and phase. So let's now talk about the magnitude of the frequency response. It's simply equal to the magnitude of this, which is equal to the magnitude of the numerator divided by the magnitude of the denominator. Well, the numerator is a pure real number, so the magnitude of that is just going to be r divided by l. Now, down in the denominator, the magnitude of this complex number is the square root of the real part squared plus the imaginary part squared, or the square root of the real part, which is r over l quantity squared, plus the imaginary part squared. And remember, we don't square the j when we're doing this. It's not minus omega squared. It's just omega squared. So that's the magnitude of the frequency response function. And of course, the phase of the frequency response function, we'll call that theta of j omega, is equal to the phase of the numerator minus the phase of the denominator. Now, once again, the phase of the numerator, well, the numerator, again, is a pure real number, so it has a phase angle of 0, minus the phase of the denominator. Well, the phase of the denominator is equal to the arc tangent of the opposite, or the imaginary part, divided by the real part, or the arctangent of omega over r over l. 
So we have two functions then that describe the frequency dependent nature of this circuit. Now let's look at first the magnitude and then the phase of these, or the, the magnitude function, the phase function of these. Let's see if we can infer a little of the frequency dependent nature. How does this thing respond over a, a wide range of frequencies. In other words, let's look at this function right here for omega equals zero, and then we'll look at it as it tends toward infinity. Now, at omega equals zero, looking at the magnitude, we have omega equals zero here, so we have the r over l over the square root of r over l squared. Well, that's just r over l over r over l. So at omega equals zero, the magnitude of the frequency response is equal to 1. Now, as omega gets bigger and tends toward infinity, we're going to have the omega squared term dominating all this, and as omega gets larger and larger, this function looks more and more like 1 over omega squared. And we get then that as omega approaches infinity, the magnitude of the frequency response approaches zero. Okay, so what does that look like? Well, at omega, if this is omega along here, and this is the magnitude here, it's going to start at zero at some, well not some value, but at one, and then as it gets bigger and bigger to going towards omega, it's going to fall off as one over omega, and it's going to be approaching zero. So it's going to be doing something like that. We're going to get more detailed, but for right now, that gives us a good feel of the frequency dependent nature of this, of the magnitude function. Now, let's look at the phase. At omega equals zero, we have zero minus the arctangent of zero. Well, the arctangent of zero is zero. Let's pause for just a second and remind ourselves of the tangent and the arctangent function. The tangent function on uh, going from 0 to 90, you recall that the, the, the tangent function is defined from minus pi halves to pi halves or from uh, minus 90 to plus 90, but we're interested in it going from 0 to 90. It does something like this and approaches an asymptote at 90 degrees. So this is the tangent function. Now the arctangent function is just this thing reflected about the x, y line, right? So it's going to start here at zero and it's going to approach a, um, an asymptote here at 90 and it's going to be doing something like that. So the arctangent of zero is zero, the arctangent of 90 is, or the arct arctangent of infinity is 90. So coming back here now to our function here, which is basically the just the negative of the arctangent function, we can now go ahead and say that at theta equals zero, the arc tangent of zero is zero. And as omega approaches infinity, the arc tangent function approaches 90 degrees. So minus the arc tangent function, it will be approaching minus 90 degrees. So as um, for, let's see, we put here omega, theta equaling zero, really we're talking about omega equaling zero here because the, the angle, or the, our variable is not theta, it's omega. So as omega equals zero, now as omega goes toward infinity, we have then the arctangent, the arctangent of infinity, if you will. Omega is getting bigger, it's approaching 90 degrees, but because it's a minus, our tangent, it's approaching a minus 90 degrees. So let's look at actual graphs of this. You'll recall that the magnitude function started at 1 and it approached 0 as omega got larger and larger and larger. And you can see that we were pretty good in our guess. I mean, it started out at 1 and, and dies out as 1 over omega. And then we have the phase function here starting at 0 degrees and approaching 90 degrees as omega approaches infinity. 
we'll look at these functions over and over and over again. These are very characteristic functions or very, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Very descriptive, especially the magnet function is very descriptive of how this low pass filter works. We have as um, for low frequencies, the, the magnitude of the transfer function is a number very close to one. For higher frequencies, the magnitude of the transfer function approaches zero. And we'll see in later videos how that then gives us a feel for what this function is going to do for each of the different frequencies for which it's defined.